Hey guys, I'm Joel and this is Chase, Attorneys of Williams Ellaby here in Kennesaw, Georgia. Coming to you today with video number 13 out of our series of 52 Weeks of Personal Injury. And today we want to talk to you about Georgia's settlement statute, specifically um, OCGA 91167.1 and OCGA 91168. That's about as technical as we're going to get, right. but we're just going to call it um, settlement statute. So first, let's talk about 67.1. Uh, and why it's important in some circumstances that you allow an attorney to send a settlement demand for you as opposed to you sending it yourself. Right, so those numbers mean nothing to anyone but lawyers, so I'm gonna try not to use them at all. So anytime there's been a car wreck case, we send basically a demand to the insurance company before we even file a lawsuit trying to settle the case without having to file that lawsuit. So what Georgia law says is that we have to follow certain steps in sending that demand in order to give the insurance company an opportunity to settle the case within the policy limits, okay? So that number in that code section that Joel was talking about basically sets out the ground rules for us to follow when sending that demand to the insurance company. So it's a technical statute and you have to strictly follow the statute in order to properly set up the demand and then have a potential for a bad faith case or claim rather, if the insurance company doesn't pay the demand and they should pay the demand. And what Chase means by bad faith case is what you're doing, like he said, is you're giving the insurance company for the at fault driver an opportunity to settle the case within the limits. The reason you're giving them that opportunity is because they have a duty to protect their insured's personal assets from any excess verdict uh, if they are given the opportunity to do so. So say you've got a uh, $25,000 policy, you send that 911 67.1 demand, or your attorney sends it, um, and gives the insurance company a chance to settle for $25,000. Insurance company says, no, it's too much, we're not gonna pay that. And then you go to trial and get a verdict and judgment against the at-fault driver for half a million dollars. Well, technically, that at-fault driver is personally responsible for $475,000 of that verdict. Um, right, whatever the insurance doesn't cover. Exactly. Realistically, the at-fault driver probably doesn't have $475,000 laying around. Um, realistically, if they did, they're probably going to figure out a way to avoid paying it, or they're gonna file bankruptcy, or something along those lines. So what usually happens is that at-fault driver who has the judgment entered against him or her can then sue their own insurance company for bad faith um, and ask that the insurance company be liable for the excess amount uh, and penalties and things like that. So what'll happen is the, the injured party will then maybe go to the uh, at-fault party and say, look, if you assign your right to sue the insurance company to me, then I won't try to get your personal assets. So that's a long and complicated way of saying um, there is a Georgia statute, settlement statute, uh, that applies to automobile wreck cases that will potentially allow you to recover more money than from just what insurance is available if you have a lawyer and if you follow the correct steps. So right. long story short, if you've been in a car wreck, it is usually a good idea, like we always say, to at least schedule a consultation with a lawyer to find out whether that Georgia settlement statute might benefit you and your case. Right, because it doesn't, it's not applicable in all cases, right? It's for only a policy limits demand, meaning you're demanding all that's available from the at-fault insurance company. Um, if there's plenty of coverage and you know your case isn't worth that much, you're not gonna send that type of demand. Yep. Um, it's also important to note that that specific type of demand can only be sent before a lawsuit is filed. Mm -hmm. Once a lawsuit is filed, you can send what's called an offer of judgment or offer, offer of settlement which was another fancy number that he said earlier, which is again basically a demand and it's a statute so it tells you what you need to do to send to the defense attorney, giving them an opportunity to pay the, uh, pay the demand amount within 30 days. And if they don't pay that amount and you go to trial and get 25% more than what you demanded, you get your attorney's fees on top of whatever the verdict is. So you wanna explain a little bit more about that? Yeah, so say you got, I'm gonna make up a number. Uh, it's gonna be a nice even number so I get the math correct. But if you go to trial and you get $10,000, right? 
Uh, well, no, let me take that. If you send the other side an offer of settlement or an offer of judgment is what we call it, uh, for $10,000 under that settlement statute that Chase was mentioning, and the other side says, eh, you know what, that's just too much, we're not gonna pay that. Well, you go to trial and get a verdict of 25% more or $12,500, uh, then you can go to the court and ask that the defendant, if you're the plaintiff, be required to pay your attorney's fees and expenses from the day that they rejected the offer. Um, and sometimes if the offer judgment is sent early in the case, that can be a significant amount of money. Um, you do have to be careful uh, when you send offers of judgment under this, this particular settlement statute uh, because sometimes when you send it, it will trigger the defense to send you one. Right, and it kind of works in the reverse. So, say the defense sends you an offer of judgment for ten thousand dollars, and you say, "No, nah, no way, I'm not taking that. That is not near enough money." Um, and then you go to trial and don't recover at least seventy-five percent of that, or seventy-five hundred dollars. Well, you could be on the hook for paying their attorney's fees and expenses. So, what this settlement statute is is it's a statute that was passed, uh, in, I think it was two thousand five. Uh, or 2006, sometime early 2000s, uh, by the Georgia legislature to encourage settlements and to put a little heat on it if somebody doesn't take a reasonable offer. Right, and that's what, it's exactly what it's meant to do, is to encourage an early settlement so you can avoid costly litigation, going to trial, and you know, hopefully, ideally, resolve the case much sooner than you would otherwise. Yep. So, so those are the two main uh, Georgia settlement statutes. There are other ones that deal with unliquidated damages and things of that nature. Uh, probably too much to get into here. Um, but long story short, um, if you have a case where you think your damages exceed the at-fault party's policy limits or if you think your damages exceed what the insurance company is offering you, uh, it is important to reach out to a lawyer. And I'm not saying that just because we're lawyers and we're trying to get business. We do want your business, but it will absolutely benefit you if you get a lawyer who knows how to utilize one or both of these settlement statutes in the state of Georgia. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so that will wrap it up for uh, week number 13. If this video has been helpful to you or if you're enjoying our 52 weeks of personal injury series, we'd appreciate you subscribing to our channel, giving us a thumbs up. Uh, or if you know of any other uh, tips or tricks associated with settlement statutes in the state of Georgia, Throw it in the comment section below. We'd, we'd love to hear from you. Um, otherwise, we will see you next week for week number 14.